All right, glory, hallelujah. We still have some daylight, so we're fine. It's a day to rejoice and just give thanks to the Lord and just um, dwell, dive deeper in His Word and, and you know, just, just try and get what He gives and catch it while we got it. Okay? Catch it while we can because we know how He works in the... Uh, how he works in the spirit realm is so different to the way that we think. And he said a thousand day, a thousand years is as one day with the Lord. And one day is as a thousand years. And Peter said, do not let this thing, do not forget this thing. Remember this thing. So he was showing us, um, like, you know, our timing, our timing is not his timing. And when the world is actually, when the world is, um, how to say, when they are sure of time, then God says, you know what, there's still a little more time. But when, when people say, okay, um, when people say, you know, we have a lot of time, then God does what he has to do, right? So last night that dream was, um, I felt like if I worked and walked, miles last night honestly i fell asleep this morning actually like five um but it was so real the angel the not the angel but he was flapping like if he had the wings of an angel he was flapping um this man was on the uh on the roof of this building and there was a sound like a trumpet and the the sound at the sound the sun was rising by the setting. I don't. It might have been rising because there was still a lot in the dream that went on through the day. So the sun would have been um, rising, and the 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 trumpet. The it's like a man. I've heard it before. I've heard it before. I've really heard it before. The trumpet sound. And everyone, you know how those Muslims pray, or even how in the Jewish faith we pray, like how they, they bow down straight to the ground. So this thing, this thing was bowing down straight to the ground. But, um, okay, so when this, the sound went out, everybody bowed down. But this man, he's up on the roof. He's like, um, what do you call this? Uh, um, uh, come on, help me like those guys from the matrix you remember the matrix you know the 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 this kind of slim but weird looking lizard looking kind of guys with the bleach blonde hair and it's great it's really braided in their head this guy's like that and he's on the um the roof and when the sound went out i'm standing there so i just came out because i wanted to go by myself in the dream but the order was for no one to leave the, their premises without another person with them. And um, so he looked at me and then he was looking, he was facing the sun and he's flapping like, like he's going down like that, like a bird and he's flapping. And like if he's, like if he's getting ready to fly, I don't know, that's how it looked. And it was, it was just creepy, okay, it was creepy. Um, he looked at me, but then he was more concerned about worshiping the sun. So he was facing the sun. That was weird. And of course, everybody in every color and creed and race and size and form will, will bow down on the, uh, the sidewalks and just, just in a strange way, strange, strange. It was like, if you didn't do it, it reminded me of, um, Daniel, Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Um, where they, um, the kings told them to bow down or they die. It was as, as important as that. So, yeah, no, I know. Father, Father is just, he, he's quickening us to something. And then when we finally got, well, we, I, I was looking for this girl. This girl had gone ahead of me. Um, it seemed to be, at first I was looking for my mom, but then it happened to be the girl that, I went by that I was staying with with her family, uh, my brother, my brother's wife, and I was looking for her, and I found her at the supermarket. Uh, at the supermarket, there was chaos. Like I'm at the back of the supermarket, and I'm seeing truckloads of food, 
people are buying truckloads of food and they're just they're they're in a hurry they're in a hurry it's like a marketplace in the back of the supermarket like people are shopping inside okay it's normal but at the back of the supermarket there are truckloads waiting and people are just loading up trucks and they're leaving and um i remember i don't remember her name do i remember her name I don't remember her name. I think it's Sarah G. I don't know. I don't remember her name. But um, she was sitting in a corner. So like if she'd gone ahead and she was waiting on me. But we had gone separate. And she's sitting in a corner and she's looking at me. And I find it strange that she's looking at me. Because I'm now looking at all these things happening in the back of the supermarket. And she's looking at me in a corner so she's sitting by a crate and she's looking at me and you know when you feel someone's eyes are looking at you so i felt that and i thought it was strange so i i told her come and she was very slow in coming i don't know it, it just it it, it looks so weird because i told her come it's getting late we have to go and she's she was very slow in getting up and coming just a second okay i'll, I'll be just a second As well as I want the music. Give me one song exercise. One exercise. One exercise. Give me this. Okay, so she was slow in coming to meet me. She didn't. She she didn't see him like she was in a rush, and I was in a rush. And I go, let's go. You know, it's getting late, and she just sat. Okay, so I don't hear the the, the sound and whatever they they're talking about there. Anyway. So, I'm calling her, I'm saying, J, well, I don't, I don't know if it's Jill or Jill, J, it starts with J, I think, I think her name starts with J, but I started to write down everything the minute that I woke up, because if I didn't, then Satan would try and take that dream from me, you know how he's trying to get me to forget things, and um, it's also an attack on the body of Christ, I think that's happening, because God says he will give us visions and dreams, and I think when God gives us visions and dreams, that he wants us to remember the things that he's telling us because it has something to to keep us in the way and and to say, just keep us safe and all that so um i'm telling her i'm like let's go and she's like she's sitting there on the crate like she's not concerned i mean she knows the place but it's like she's not concerned and it reminded me of um Lot and his wife, when the angel said they can do nothing until he goes and hurry up and, and, and get out of the city. And Lot and his daughters are hurrying out of the city and his wife turns around and she's staring at the destruction that is going to come upon Sodom. And God said not to turn back and look at the city. So, uh, oh man. There's so many things in there. Then I, I, I'm all over the place with this dream, okay? Because this dream was re it really impacted me. It hit me hard. So um, I should have started from the beginning. I don't remember all the things that I wrote. But um, I was looking for David. I was, I was calling out to him. And I was asking the brother that I went by, well, call him and tell him that I'm here. And it's not hard for him to get to me now. Call him and tell him that I'm here to come and meet us right now and I was looking for him now in my dream there was like an order man still loud okay I'm sorry about that so okay so I'm looking for him and when I go outside when I step outside I went outside I see like 
I don't know, just these strange people on the roof. On the roof, they were, each one of them were on the roof. And I woke up thinking that it was happening. I swear, I thought it was happening. I woke up and I'm like, I'm looking at the roof. I'm like, wait, what? We, I'm trying to, for a moment, I'm trying to separate reality from a dream. And it, the, these people, I remember this very muscular, dark, Jamaican looking guy, Rasta guy, muscular, really muscular, but somewhat his countenance was evil. And he's on the roof and he's like, he's just, they're just like staring out. They're staring towards the sun. Like they're waiting for the sun to rise. And um, there's a revolution about the Antichrist. Remember the Antichrist symbol, the rising sun? And the, the um, uh, I remember it. Okay, the Antichrist system, symbol is the rising sun. We know that. Um, something about the kings of the east. Okay, so the way that they were looking, um, the sun, how does the sun set and rise? Where does the sun rise? The sun rises in the east or sets in the east? Rises in the east, right? It had something to do with the, the awakening of the Antichrist. So they're on the roof, and this one guy in particular, he has this evil countenance on his face. And he's on the roof, he's on, it's like a shop, it doesn't matter what roof. It can be six feet tall, it can be on a skyscraper, it can be, it doesn't matter how high. Once it's on a roof. And um, so they were, it was happening everywhere in the city. And these people, all the, the others, there wasn't many though, they, they were just like, there were a lot of those people on the roofs, yes, but there were a few people out in the streets. Then, at the at the sounding of the, the horn or the trumpet, let me show you what it sounds like, okay? Situation, the sea. Just a second. Let me try and get it. And the moon shall turn to blood before the great and notable day of the Lord. Just Genesis okay. one fourteen said God is using the sun, moon, and stars to send the sunlight refracted through the atmosphere. Oh, so you know they have to swim. Darling, where is it? In North Carolina, powder banks. It's like this, man. It's something like I, I can't even explain the trum trumpet. Trumpet. It's as if someone took a, a I, I don't know, a horn and they blew into a tunnel over the sky. <laughs> it it sounded, it, it's like, it's not like a trumpet trumpet. It sounds more like a horn that, you know, I need to find the sound now. I, I can hear it in my head. Let me see. Something like that, but not like that. <sighs> kind of like it has this echo. Let me see if I get it. Hmm? What the fuck is it? It's coming from the sky. Oh, I'm just cursed. You idiot. Why did you curse? Okay, just a second. Um, well, it's something like that, except the guy cursing. Um, the 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 sound is like that, and it's like a do do. It's like when something like like when you have a state of emergency. And, and they sound a thing. So this is how it was echoing through the city. And it reminded me of what we read yesterday with Ezekiel 9, where the writer with the ink horn, ink horn, ink, he's writing, he's one, he's like a prophet, he's like John, and John is writing, 
the writer with the ink horn um, goes through the city sounding the alarm and then he speaks the judgment of God so I remember walking out into the city now so oh with the money there's a part with money there seemed to be a shortage of $20 bills I don't know why 20 but just 20 when I opened my purse I had like so many of them and I was sharing with my brother and his wife because they were about to go to the, um, the supermarket and get some stuff and stuff. So they had two kids. They were Dutch speaking. Um, they were Dutch speaking. Um, something the child was telling me. Um, one was one was really really attached to me, um, and she was telling me something. She kept telling me something, and she kept wanting to go with me. So. Um, she was really attached to me and when I well when they were they were going to the supermarket so I, I you know me being the guest there, I'm like well, you know let me just um, contribute to that so but then something with $20 so I put my $20 there and I'm like you know because I open my purse and I have a lot and then she opens her purse and she has one but then I'm telling her, well, I just put that one there. And then she's like, but she just opened her purse and she took out one, but she only had one. But how could she have put one if that one is still in the purse? Something about $20. It was weird. So um, $20 bills was in there. And if we remember the 9-11 th um, event was showcased on the $20 USA bill, the USA currency. It was it was showcased on the blowing up of the towers. Um, so I think Father is pointing us something to that. And then what, what was the rest? I don't remember. I have to go and see. Let me just read. Um, That dream is going to um, okay. Someone is telling me that he doesn't think he he'll get dreams. That only some people get dreams. Now, if you desire to get dreams, God is going to speak to you if you allow Him to. But even if you don't allow Him to, because this is how He's calling his flock that is not of Christianity out to know that the hour is late, okay? So, um, let me get where I wrote, where did I write this thing? Where is it not there? His victory. Okay, so, okay, here we go. So, let me read what I wrote. Okay, so I had a dream, kind of weird. I was in New York at first. It, uh, if I see, if I stand in that place, I'll have deja vu. I know it. I just know it. Somewhere at first, there was a protocol. So right, so there was a kind of martial law. So you couldn't go out. If you go, you went out. You were at your own risk after a certain time. At a certain time, it's like people were coming down. They were coming out of nowhere and taking people, snatching them off the streets. Um, again, it was some kind of lockdown. My visit was a surprise. Like, I just showed up there. I went to a brother's family with a ride. Okay, I said that. They were in trouble and just getting by. Streets were seriously unsafe to walk alone. So nobody went out alone. Wherever, wherever people were, they were going out two by two. That, that's something very important because it brought me back to the Bible scripture where he said he sent them out two by two. Remember that? Uh, he was pointing me to so many things. Okay. And it says, it didn't matter where you go, if you went to a shop, if you went to a park, if you, it doesn't matter where you went, how close it was, you had to go two by two. And it says, um, well, right, I just spoke to you about the, um, I spoke to you about the $20 thing. And then it said, um, $20 were bills were hard to find and they were just in shock that I had so many 
But um, anyway, so I gave it to them, and um, let me continue. It was it was even my twenty dollar bill because my twenty dollar bill, if I could find one right now, is purple. It's purple, and this thing was purple. Okay, so wow, check this out. Um, I had twenty dollar bills in my purse, like wow, and I don't know, it was both U.S. and mine was purple, but she also had purple, and she was in the U.S.A. So um. I don't know. We'll, we'll just read and see. So now I wanted to see what it was like to go out alone because I found it strange that people were just going out two by two and no one was really going out by themselves anywhere, anywhere. Once you left your property, once you left your gate, that was it. You had to be with someone. Um, so it was at the time of the rising of the sun, remember, and the, these men were on the roof of the buildings. And I went out and there were people everywhere, but strange people, because everybody's just facing the direction of the rising of the sun. Okay, um, the, again, the Antichrist symbol is the rising sun. And hmm, if we just go back a little bit in history, like about a year or two, we'll see where Obama's symbol is what? Obama's symbol is the rising sun. Um, just a second. Okay, I went out and there were people everywhere, but scattered scattered okay um before i got into the city i went to a supermarket and that's where i saw um what was it after i don't know well whatever um the strange people they were on the rooftops um they seemed to be looking for something they were facing the sun rising again that guy with the the beach blonde almost white hair um braided braided in um, looking like something from the Matrix, which is a movie I haven't seen in years. Um, he was on the rooftop, and something told me he was a fallen. He was a watcher, and it said, "Okay, here's what happened." It said, "But strange people of every color on rooftops." I woke up thinking this was real. I really woke up thinking, "Like, wow, what?" You know, I was like, "Now, how do I explain this one in particular?" Okay, a bleach bond almost white here breathed in to white guy like but like pale pale this thing is pale this guy is pale and it says that they were on rooftops and I woke up thinking it's real okay well whatever I'm reading uh, I'm being redundant okay it looked like the guy from the matrix who was on the roof there was a trumpet sound that sound that I just played which was that crazy um That crazy sound that I just played a while ago. Um, it's like a horn echoing into a tunnel or something, but it's just happening over the, the entire city. And um, I think this is a warning, honestly. It's a big warning. Um, let me not lose myself here. Okay. So it sounded throughout the city. Everyone would bow low. So everyone, wherever they started, was bowing low. But the guy on the roof, he looked at me. He looked at me strange because I wasn't bowing. I was standing there and I was observing everything. And, um, okay, yeah, I was looking here. I didn't bow. It said, oh, first I thought, first I thought when, when the trumpet sounded and everybody bowed, well, this is great. This is, this is awesome. Everybody's worshiping God. And then when I when he he I looked up and I saw the roof on the rooftops where these guys they were bowing down in this weird way, kind of like like if they were trying to fly like that, you know, you know when you like when those kids are pretending to fly and they're like this, so they they were bowing down really low, but they were facing the sun, and um, that was weird. Oh, that weirded me out. Um, I said, well, I thought I thought it was great. I was like, yes, everybody's paying, paying tribute to God. Everybody's bowing down. Oh, just in the way that they worship in the Jewish thing, you know. And all of a sudden, that guy caught my eye, and he's flapping like if he has wings. And um, remember in Ezekiel 9, just before Ezekiel 9 is Ezekiel 8, obviously. And um, what they were doing were 25 elders, was it? 
or 70 elders, 25 elders, I think it was 25 men. They were bowing down, facing the sun with their bottom to the temple of God. In other words, they're showing who they're worshiping and they don't care about the rest, right? So remember in Ezekiel 8, um, um, 16, that is triple eight, 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 eight. 8. Okay, so Ezekiel 8, 16. Um, we'll go there into these scriptures and we'll check it out. Trust me, we have to check out these scriptures. Um, but they were, I mean, this is what it brought me to, right? And again, I thought they were bowing down to God. But then when I saw that they were on the roof and they were bowing down to the sun, then I knew exactly what was going on when he started to flap like if he had wings. And... He, while he's bowing down, he's looking at me to see if I'm doing but I'm not doing it. And then his attention shifts from me and just focuses to the sun, completely to the sun, like if I wasn't even there. And um, again, that's like this kind of thing. And then like um, I went home, I went home. And they were already, ex they already expected what I had to say because this was the normal for them. This was the norm. This is what life had become. And, wow, Father. Whew, this is a lot. Okay. Okay. Um, here's what he's saying. The fallen are going to take over. And... This is going to be everyday life. It's going to be scary when the fallen, they take over, when they have their three and a half thing. It's going to be scary. Here's what, what I hear. Wow, he's, okay, let me read it again. Where am I? Okay, so then I, I got home. And they were, alre they already expected what I had to see. They already knew that this was happening. And it had become a daily, a daily thing for them. It had become life for them. They already, they had, they were adapting to it. They were trying to work around it. Again, tribulation. And people are just working around it, you know, like, oh, well. Okay, so it, it had become life for them. Finally, I was, I was looking for David. I was calling, I was asking my brother, the brother who I went to, to call him up and tell him that I'm here. And tell him that I'm easy to find now. Tell him to come to me. And in my dream, and I walked around to the supermarket, right? So it was getting dark. So it was, it was coming to evening, maybe like four or five in the evening. And I went to a supermarket and that's where it so happened that the street that I passed through brought me to the back of the supermarket. And that's where I saw trucks and trucks and trucks just filling up with food and water. So I believe God is telling us to fill up with food and water in great amounts. Um, and then the girl who was with, with, with well, didn't, she wasn't with me. She had gone, she was going somewhere and I said, well, I'm going to go, but I'm going to go after her. And she just sat in a corner and she was monitoring me like she was looking at me. And I'm like, well, come on, let's go, Jay. I think her name started with Jay. And she, um, she just, she was very slow in getting up and leaving with me and um, it took me back to the days of Lot where the angels were rushing out Lot and his wife looked back and she was slow to come she was like you know she was hesitant and you know the Bible says look up for your redemption to us now that's one the Bible also says keep watch Jesus said, keep watch, keep watch, for you do not know, O oh, Holy Spirit of living God, Father. Woo, okay, wow. <laughs> Everywhere there's skin, there's a pause raising. Um, keep watch, for the day of the Lord is coming. You do not know the, the hour the Son of Man is coming back. Okay, and she was very slow to come. And the way that she was getting up alone, it was just weird. She's sitting on this crate and she's looking at me. And I'm like, this is awfully busy for just the back of a supermarket. And then I, I thought at first the trucks were offloading, but they were people buying at the back in bulk. People knew what, they had an idea. 
whoever knew what was coming, they were preparing and they were stocking up, okay? And then, well, I don't, I don't remember what else after that. I think she went her way and then we came back home. And um, I remember a neighbor, it's like a pretty, really, it looks safe, gated community, beautiful, private, urban setting. And it's like the neighbor, she, the sun is going, like now, the sun, it's getting dark. It's not getting dark right now, but you know what I mean? It's getting late. And I remember a woman, she's, um, she's just, there's like a picket fence somewhere there. Yeah, there's like a picket fence there. And she's looking over it. She's not outside of it. And she's saying, um, which households got, got the watch this night? They, they, they have like a watch, like each household, they keep watch. And remember what Jesus said in his word, keep watch again, keep watch, keep watch. He calls us to keep watch the fourth night, the fourth, the fourth watch of the night, the third watch of the night. Like he tells us to keep watch, keep watch, because we do not know the day or the hour. But it was as if, wow. It was as if when dark came, when darkness came, something would be out there. And if you didn't keep watch over your home, it would enter. Or it would try to enter. If you if you slipped up in any way, if your home was not completely locked up, completely protected, it would enter. So that neighbor was shouting down the street telling everyone who the who has this this watch and um i don't know i just remember we were building like a tent for the kids just to mess around just play with them in the yard and we were we were building a tent and one of the kids were really attached to me she's grabbing me actually and she was telling me something in her baby voice kind of she's like three years old and she's um she's telling me something in her baby voice and I couldn't remember what it was. All I know she was she was telling me something constantly and I was I was trying to talk to her and she well yeah well, we were trying to soothe her with snacks and just trying to keep the kids calm. So that was my dream. It was um something. And when I woke up I felt like if I ran a mile Oh my goodness, I felt like if I, or three, or ten, I don't remember, I just, I just feel, I just felt like if I really, I think my spirit traveled last night, you know, this morning, five o'clock. Um, I'm going to share with you a little secret. And you see at the rising of the sun, if you've gotten your night's rest, even not. Um, it's a beautiful time to get up and pray. Remember, that's when you command your morning. That's when you take charge. But, but, and God has given me this revelation. At the, the rising of the sun, at the coming of the new day, the angels in heaven, they begin to, they magnify him with a greater sense even. But, wait, but. So even though, even though the Antichrist symbol is the rising sun, we are taking charge of the day in Abba. We're taking charge of, of, of the day in Jesus, okay? We're pulling down his agenda immediately. But I found it a very, very powerful thing to pray at the rising of the sun. So if I have to set my clock for, um, what time is the sun rising? Maybe like, 5.45 or something. I set it. I wake up. And go back to sleep. But these nights I can't sleep. These nights I am really stirred in the spirit about the fall. And you guys know that I am, I am just on edge with the fall. And God is pushing me to, to research the fall. And now this dream, when they arise, from their hiding. 
in the reign of the Antichrist, humanity. They're going to try and enslave humanity. It's not going to be business as usual unless, you know, unless you bow down to them. And even so not, it's like they're the boss around. And God is calling us to be aware, to stand up, to gird your loins, having done all you could do to stand. Keep watch of your house. Lock it up. Make sure that you're under the blood. That's why daily, some people think, oh, you know, it's just such a repetitive prayer. If you, I want you to try and pray for, I just have 2,600 people on here. But try and pray for, for each soul. Make that prayer for each soul and you feel the weight. You feel, you feel it. It, it is so important. It is so important that we get under the blood because it's the blood of the Lamb that destroys Satan. So whatever it was and wherever it was, wherever these, at first there's a few people walking in the city and when the trumpet sounds, people just come out. They come out and they line the sidewalk like, you know, Muslims, when Muslims, hi brother Nathan, when they um, when they they bow down to pray in Mecca or wherever wherever they go, um, the sidewalks are just lined with people at the edge of the sidewalks. Like I can't even explain. And they're facing the rising sun, which is the Antichrist. So, um, again, Jesus said in his word, he said, if it were possible, the very elect would be deceived. But if you're walking by the word, and if the word is the one that's leading you, if, um, if the Holy Spirit is guiding you for a while, you might stumble, but he will hold you up. God says he will not allow you to be taken away. He will not. He said, Father, those you've given to me, Holy Spirit, those you have brought to me, I have lost not one of them. So he doesn't, he doesn't um, intend to allow any one of us to be lost. He wants us to know that the Nephilim, which are the the hybrids of the fallen and humanity, they are on the earth. They're not in hell. Hell is prepared for them at the judgment of God. People have this habit of saying, um, Satan and his, his the, 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 the demons are in hell. They're not in hell. Hell is prepared for Satan and his angels, his fallen angels at, at judgment. Um, it's a it's a big calling for us to keep watch to God our to God our hearts even to protect our homes men to the men God is saying Christ is the head of you nothing else nothing before him nothing. Christ is the head of you. What does that mean? Let him take charge. This beautiful thing called the Bible gives us, like, it's like a manual. It's like God writing perfectly. Um, God writing perfectly the things that we would go through and guiding us through it. And he didn't just give us the Bible. He gave us his, the gift of his spirit to guide us. So men, it is so crucial in this hour. This is crunch hour. Remember the Holy Spirit, he's been telling us that. He's been telling us that. Um, 
it's crunch time. It's as the hours getting darker, the deception is going to get deeper. People are going to fall in the norms of it. It's like you go through your day, you wake up, you go to work, you um you go to work, you come you go to school, you you do the kids, you, you prepare the kids, you see about the hobby, and then you're back home again, you know. And then all of a sudden this thing comes. You see a, a, something's changed on the news. Not something extravagant, but something just just a little. Because Satan is not going to come on and say, I am the devil and everybody worship me. No, not yet. Not like that. Um, So at the at the coming of the Lord, which is what we are nearing to, um, things are gonna get even more tricky. You gotta look out at the. Don't even look at. Don't be. Don't be. Don't be. Um, I will. I'm. I'm gonna watch it just now. Um, don't be surprised at what is coming. Don't be. Don't be fooled by all the. The nonsense that's going on in politics, but even so, it's not nonsense, but it's a distraction. It's for us to be distracted. Okay, that's what Satan is trying to do because that's when he sneaks up on us when we let our guard down. Um, even so, it's like, uh, how, how is he saying it? Okay, as it's getting later, it's getting darker. And as it's getting darker, the fallen are coming out more and more and more. Some people are getting sexual temptations in prayer. When they kneel down to pray, they are getting sexually tempted in prayer. So at the time they seek the Lord, they're thinking of, guess what? Sex. They're thinking of um, pleasure and, and every other thing that they're not supposed to be thinking of. Some people are forgetting the Our Father prayer, the simple, the Lord's prayer. Even at the, because why? Satan knows that there's power in prayer. Prayer avails much. Prayer brings much. Remember the angels in heaven. The angels in heaven are up at our beckon. They, when we give them, when we give them a command, they're here to help us because they are attending to every need of the Almighty God. And their job is to battle the demons, okay? When we say the blood of Jesus is against Satan and his legion, we put up a barrier immediately and say, Satan, there is nothing in me that is of you. You have no part with me. So we stand by the cross immediately and we're covered. But during prayer, now... We're seeking the face of God. We want to, sometimes you're not even, you're not even uttering the words yet. But you get like a headache, like, for example, this morning, um, you, you look how the noise, all the noise started when I started to pray. And as soon as, man, the, the system, the, the, the internet thing here went berserk. And then as soon as I stopped, it just went normal. And then I, I started again, and it got quiet. And I'm like, what in the world? We're not wrestling against flesh, and you got to realize that, you see, they're not, they're not telling people these things in churches. They don't want to scare people. But it's not to scare people. It's to ready people. Just like the commandments of God, it's not to hold back your fun. God doesn't want to hold back your fun. You know what he wants to hold back? Your death and your destruction from, from hell. Those commandments are there to protect us, to keep us in a, a straight way that is pleasing to God. And, of course, we don't have to go and read, Thou shalt not, because the Holy Spirit inside of us, that is Abba Father himself, Jesus Christ, he's writing it on our hearts daily. He's writing it, and he's giving us conviction. Listen, 
thou shall not, thou shall not. But we don't even have to read it now because he's inside of us and greater is he inside than he outside. So the thing that the world is doing and they're saying as dearly well, it's the norm. So how do we get around this? Okay, we'll just get around this. We'll work around this and we'll just accept it as every day. No. Every day, lives are perishing. Every day, thousands and thousands of souls are perishing. Some are dying without the gospel. Some are, some have made that decision and are dying with Christ. So their next thing that they will see is the resurrection. They will see the Lord's face. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. And we have to keep our eyes on Jesus. Not any, not the false light, the real light. Jesus Christ himself. He's the light of the world. He's the living word. And if we don't keep our eyes on him, we could become comfortable. We could become complacent with God. And then when we become complacent with God, we just accept it as the norm. And continue in the, it just continues with the rest of the world. The Bible says, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. When those men on the roof, even the one flapping like he had wings when he's clearly in human form, just like the thing from the matrix, exactly like the thing from the matrix. Um, wow. Like, they know what's coming. Satan knows, he knows, the Bible says, the devil has come down. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the seas. Why? The inhabitants of the earth and the sea? Let's find that scripture. The devil has come down having great wrath because he knows he has but a short time. All right, Revelations twelve twelve. Here we go. Can you guys see my pause reason for this one? Like, or can you see that? Oh, my pores are on edge. Oh, like. I feel a conviction, okay? Check this out. Revelations 12, reading from verse 11 to 13. They have conquered him, who? Satan, by the blood of the Lamb, this Lamb, Jesus, by the word of their testimony. What is the word? Jesus came for me, he lived a perfect life, he died for me, he rose again. There is therefore no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, okay? He is alive where? Inside. He is propelling us forward. He is doing the work. Check this out. All right. They have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives so as to shy away from death. Therefore, Rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea. With great fury the devil has come down to you. Knowing he has only a short time. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth as well. Don't find that. It's the same thing. Let's go into the King James Version. 
This one is a study Bible. All right. Revelations 12, verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, and loved not their lives till the death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, there we go, and of the sea, for the inhabitants of the sea. What does that mean? All the fishes, all the marine stuff. Oh, man, remember when the Bible says that the sea is turned to blood? Man, what do you think Satan wants to do? He hates every, it's like he's gone on a, a spoiled child rampage, you know? The, the, he's been he's been kicked out of heaven. He doesn't want anybody to survive anything to go. He just wants God to destroy his creation. All right. All right. So we're looking at. Um, I don't know why I'm looking at Michael here. I'm seeing Michael. It says he knows he has a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast to the earth, he persecuted the church, the woman who had brought forth the man child. Who is the church that, that carries the truth? Who is the church that stands by the word? Who is the church that lifting up the truth and standing in who? In the strength of what? The Holy Spirit. And it says, which brought forth the man-child. Okay, so that is all those who are rising up with the truth, Satan's going to attack. He's going to attack because he doesn't want the truth to spread. He doesn't want people aware. And again, people are being taken out daily by man what about the fire victims what about the flood victims what about um those who those who are perishing in all the storms and the twisters and the tornadoes and the earthquakes and the landslides and mudslides and everything else that's happening these are souls and satan is laughing because if they two things he likes is that the truth is taken out if they die and they're standing in Christ. And the, the thing that they like the most is souls are perishing if they don't have Christ. The remainder, he, his agenda is to bring humanity down to, to a controllable number. And if you research the Illuminati, you'll see exactly that this is their agenda to bring humanity down to a controllable number. It's a scary thing. But then, perfect love casts out fear. So we live, we live to Christ. We die, we die to Christ. Amen? It's not so scary. And um, the fallen are here. The, Satan and his, his legion, they're here. They're here. And... They want to ruin humanity. Now, we are here to be witnesses of Father. In life, through death, if it has to come. If the rapture doesn't happen before, get ready. Prepare yourselves to bear the truth no matter what. Amen? So God is telling us to keep watch and keep our house Remember the Bible says, if that man had known the hour, the thief would come. He would have kept watch and not suffered his house to be broken into. What the woman was shouting down the street to everyone, this house has the, the next watch. So, the body of Christ. Okay, what, what, what? What was I saying? Right, the body of Christ is like that neighborhood. It's made up of many members. 
just like a neighborhood made up of many households. But we're standing as one. We're standing as one, just like the neighborhood. The neighborhood is standing as one. They are looking out for each other even. See how that works? Wow, Father, thank you. The neighborhood is, is the body of Christ and the household are the members in the body of Christ keeping watch. Watch for what? For Satan and his devices, for, for the coming of the day of the Lord, for the truth that it be magnified and not brought down low. We're keeping watch. We're looking intently for the day of the Lord, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Does somebody get that? Does somebody realize how powerful this is? I don't know if I'm getting out what I need to get, but it's it, it, it's a revelation. And when we pray, we ought to stand together and pray. Don't just watch one person praying. Man, you begin to share, share. That's why I keep telling you. It's not about popularity. It's not about a, a ultimate, a, another um, having an a alternate agenda. It's not, it's no. It's about getting the word out, getting the truth out so that more of our brethren could come in and stand with us and make us stronger. Because the more we stand together, the harder we are to take down. The Bible says Satan's kingdom divided against himself cannot stand. That's why he operates as a legion. But we, he's made sure to divide Christianity. He's made sure to divide even those standing in Christ. Oh, it's this sector and that sector and this one and this one. When the truth is we're supposed to stand by the blood of the Lamb who's bought us all, and in the strength of His Holy Spirit that quickens us, looking to the cross as our our redeeming a redeeming place, and not to the nomination of a church, not to single out each other, except we righteously judge by the word. We're supposed to be standing by the word. By the word of God. Amen. By the word of God. We're supposed to be lifting this up very, very high for the earth to see. We are spiritual Israel in these days, people. Israel is blind right now to the fullness of the Gentiles. That is us. We are the Gentiles that has been grafted into the olive tree. We weren't born in Israel. I am in the Caribbean. You guys are in America. You guys are in Australia. You guys are in Africa. You guys are in Europe. You guys are in China. You guys are in India. In South America. God is seeing rise up. Under one name, rise up under one name, even if we were to make this prayer our own as one body, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, Father, you're sovereign, you hold all things, hallowed be thy name. You, Lord Jesus, the kingdom rests on your shoulders. You are the Holy One, the Anointed One. Thy kingdom come. He went away to a far country to lay claim on his kingship and then return. Well, we are sent to a far country. Earth is not our home. Heaven is our home. We are here to lay Claim to our airship, our airship through our Father. We're here to be a witness. Amen. He is, he is, thy kingdom come. Just like you kicked down Satan from heaven and told him there was no place in your kingdom. Right now we can do the same. And you, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come in our lives as it is in heaven. Give us this day. 
the day that we have today, Father, the breath of life inside, give us this day our daily bread. Because, whew, can you feel the Holy Spirit? He, we walk by faith and not sight. We are fed. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Um, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. Forgive us of the things that we've done. As we forgive those, those who have sinned against us, those who have come against us, those who don't even deserve to be forgiven. Give us the heart of you, Jesus. Forgive those, forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Sin is the transgression of the law. We are trespassing on God daily. If you go through and say you're not a sinner, you're a liar. Jesus said, if you say you have no sin in you, you are a liar. The truth is not in you. We are all saved by grace. Do not hinder your brethren from coming to you to reconcile, to recompense. Do not hinder your brethren from coming to you. Do not turn your face against them and say, I don't want to hear it. Even your neighbor, again, we're joining as one. We're supposed to come together as one. But Satan knows that if we come together as one, what? We're going to be stronger against him. All right, so where am I? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. My God, you take the wheel. You are the shepherd. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Lead us not into temptation, but lead us in the path that you show us. But deliver us from all evil. Again, yea, do I walk through the valley? I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me, because you are my shepherd. I shall want for nothing. You are my protection, my light, my shield, my buckler. You're everything to me, Father. And thy word, again, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You go your valley of the shadow of death. I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Okay, where am I with this? Oh, wait. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is what? The kingdom. All authority, for thine is the kingdom and the power. So we're not operating by ourselves. We're operating in the fire of the Holy Ghost. His fire, the Lord's sovereignty. When we call upon his name, Jesus Christ, we're proclaiming that he has the power. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It is done. It is finished. It is finished before it even began, but Satan doesn't realize that. Because um, I think it was last night God was showing me this. Well, last night or yesterday evening. Even if he were to give Satan a second chance. I mean, Satan has a chance, but he has so much pride built up in him. That every time he gets the opportunity to exalt himself above God, he takes it. And even if it's for a second God showed me this. Even if it's for a second, he sits on the throne. Satan. Satan sits on his throne. And he he just relinquishes that moment. He, he sucks in that moment like, wow, for just a second even, I am in charge in this way. You know, in that uppityness. But God says he has no power. You silly unemployed cherub, you have no power. God has all the power. All the glory is His. All the praise is His. Everything is working to His expected end. And even your rebelliousness is a part of His plan. So when Father gave that dream last night and He was calling for the neighborhood watch as the things are happening in the city, come on, we ought to see in this day and this time what's going on because there's so many things to grab from this. If you get revelation, share with me. If you had similar dreams, share with me, Brother Nathan. I'm going to check out your video now. Um, and um, just to share with me, we're here to share.
share as much as you could. If you can't share, tell me. I make it public, and we go public, and we just share everything. Okay. Um, I hope this was in some way encouraging to you. I hope that you were blessed by this. Like God says, in the last days, He will pour His Spirit on all flesh, not some. Be willing. Be willing to rightly divide by the word. He will give interpretation. Do not give your own interpretation to the dream. God, remember, He interprets His own, His, his dreams, okay? He interprets His dreams. Again, Joseph. Remember Joseph. So, and um, Daniel. Remember them. Because they, they didn't interpret their dreams by themselves. Um, they didn't interpret the king's dreams by themselves. They interpreted by the Spirit of God. So thus says the living God. And that's what happens. And that's what he wants us to do. Come together as one. And stand in the power of Christ. Knowing that it's not ourselves. But we're here to be a witness of the one who predestined us to be a witness of him. I'll leave you with this word. I love you, not as much as Abba loves you. Abba loves you beyond anything you could ever imagine, anything you could ever fathom. He loves us greater, greatest. He's the greatest love. And um, I hope that you are really pressing in to the presence of God. I hope that you are picking up your word daily. Even even today, As I mean, I had a deal. Thank God he knew exactly what he needed. I needed rest from yesterday because I was exhausted. But sometimes I will admit that I forget that I am human and I think I'm in a glorified body. So I don't need to eat or sleep or drink anything. And I just go, I go, I push, I push, I push. And sometimes I overdo it. So maybe that's why I need a husband. To remind me to eat and drink. I used to beg David all the time. Please remind me to eat something. Or drink drink some water. Because that is a bad habit of mine. And um, um, again, as we stand two and two, two and three. Remember where we stand. Two and three is in the midst of us. If you have a prayer request, lay it down. I'll be glad to pray for you. And come into agreement with you. And it will be done. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, beloved. I love you. In Jesus' name, bye.